Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. Now we turn to the third kind of word order freedom that is not predicted by X-bar theory and movement directly. This is the phenomenon called scrambling. We find that there are uh, languages in the world which have what are sometimes called free word order. Walbury, a language spoken in Australia, is perhaps one of the most classic such cases. Um, we have a sentence like, the child sees me here, but in fact the words uh, can appear in pretty much any order. There is one restriction, which is the auxiliary verb, the, the kaju, kaju here, has to be in the second position. But other than that, uh, the words can appear in, in any word order at all. So uh, this is the origin of this term, free word order languages. But when, it, you, it, when you investigate these languages a little more deeply, you find that these sentences don't exactly mean the same thing. Uh, the ways in which they differ is they differ in terms of uh, how speakers and listeners perceive the items in the sentence relative to the discourse or the surrounding conversation. Um, with respect to what's new information, what's old information. Um, so let's take a look at this with a language where it's a little, um, we have a lot more data, which is Japanese. And Japanese allows a certain freedom of word order. Um, you can have the order S uh, O V, um, where ga is the nominative marker marking subjects and O is the accusative marker marking objects. And that's a, a grammatical sentence. Um, you can also reverse the order of those, so you can actually have um, OSV. Uh, the other orders are not permissible in Japanese, but there's a freedom of word ordering between the subject and the object. There is a difference in meaning between one and two. Uh, in one, uh, the object is new information. In two, the subject is new information. Uh, and what we mean by new information is information that was not previously contained in the discourse. So uh, we see a, a situation where word order is determined by discourse factors rather than things like subjecthood or case. Um, one possible explanation for this is that instead of having complementizers, uh, we actually have a very complex uh, system which includes um, complementizer-like heads that represent discourse information. So we have a focus phrase, and that, that is the position of new information. And we have the topic phrase, and that's the position of old information. And DPs can end up in either position. So they can end up in this focus position or in this topic position, and that will result in varying word orders. So this is a standard analysis of, um, of s languages with um, scrambling. Um, we find languages all over the world do this. So for example, um, Persian does it. Um, a lot of languages of the Indian subcontinent do it. Um, Hungarian does it. Lots of languages seem to allow a freedom of word order but the word order is determined by the function of the DPs relative to um, their, their newness or oldness in the discourse. This is scrambling. 